Do you know why the rich get rich and the poor stay poor? If not, then in today's video, I'm going to teach you something that Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki teaches that will completely change your outlook about money and wealth. So are you ready to learn the number one secret to wealth? Well, here it is. If you can get this through your mind, get this through your brain, this will completely change your path to wealth. It's not how much money that you make. It's how you make your money. Let me repeat that. It's not how much money you make. It's how you make your money. Question. How did you pick your career? Now, I bet some of it had to do with the potential income that you can make. I mean, who wants to work and, you know, like me, who wants to work and scrape on people's teeth as a dentist if you're not at least going to be compensated pretty fairly, right? Before we get into today's video, if you haven't already downloaded my free passive income guide, you can do so in the link below this video. Now, everything I'm going to discuss today came from Robert Kiyosaki's book, The Cashflow Quadrant. Now, in the book, he breaks down the different career paths along with our current tax system structure. It perfectly explains how our tax system has been set up and how various professionals basically view the world. So you may or may not have seen this before, but this is what he calls the cash flow quadrant. And it's broken down into employee, self-employed, big business owner, and investor. So employee is simply somebody that works for another person. Self-employed, as you know, is anybody that either runs their own business or like me has their own dental practice. The big, the big business owner, this is someone that's not involved with, with the day-to-day -day grind of running a business. So it's not the person that, you know, for instance, a gym owner, he's not the one opening up the gym. He's not in there straightening up the weights. He's not getting the dumbbells in line, getting the yoga mats out every morning. Uh, it's the gym owner that actually controls the business. And then last but not least, you have the investor, and which is what I'm actually striving for. And you'll soon be as well after you watch this video. So what I'd like to do is, is go down and break down the, each quadrant into the pros and cons. So let's start with the employee. Now, as a periodontist, most of my dental classmates graduated from dental school and went to work as a employee uh, with an owner dentist. Well, why is that? Well, the main reasons are, you know, when we get out of training, we have high amounts of debt, student loan debt. Back in 2005, when I got out of training, you know, even back then, it was very expensive to, to start a practice from scratch, which is what I did. And these days, as you can imagine, it's even more expensive. Plus, when we're in training, we're not taught anything about how to start a practice, how to run a business, even though we go to school for what? 20, 25 years to do so, figure that one out, right? So having a high amount of debt, not having any business education or background or anything like that, you know, that that's one of the main reasons why people become an employee is because of security. They want to, you know, they want to go somewhere that, that they feel secure. They're not really sure about, so I'm just going to go work for somebody else. So all of these factors, they basically boil down to one thing, you know, getting out of training, not knowing what you're doing and getting the chance of not only working for somebody, but, you know, you, you get a pay, you get paid a, a decent amount of income and learning about the business side of running a practice. You know, for most people, this is the best way to go. So the other reason people choose to go the employee route is that, that they'll get something called benefits. Now, examples of benefits, uh, it could be a employee sponsor 401k. Um, it could be health, may have life. You may have other different types of insurances, but you know, basically you're, you're getting benefits to work there versus you having to pay for them completely out of, the, out of your pocket. Uh, usually if you're an employee, you typically know ahead of time what your salary is. So one of the big benefits of why people become an employee is they get a steady paycheck. So maybe if you're an employee, you get paid 150 grand a year. Well, you'll know that out of that, you'll pay 30, 35 grand in taxes. So roughly you'll have $115,000 left to budget, to buy groceries, to make, uh, pay your mortgage, car payment, bills, pay down debt, whatever. 
All right, so let's talk a little. You know, those are some of the some of the uh, pros of being an employee. Uh, let's get into a, a few of the downsides or the cons. And one of the major downsides, uh, maybe I should do this in blue, so we can see the difference. One of the main downsides of, of being an employee is lack of or no control. Now, you work for somebody, you have a boss, so your boss is the one that dictates what they pay you, they dictate your salary. So uh, you can't just go typically and just ramp up your production like an owner could and get more money unless you're in, in a, an area where you're, or you, you work in an office where it's based on a bonus system. So typically you're under your employer's control of how much you make. Uh, next has to do with you're trading your time for money when you're in this quadrant. So for instance, if you make $10 an hour where you have to work, you know, X amount of hours based on, you know, what you can get paid. So you're, you're going there, you're trading your time and in return, it could be 40, 50, 60 hours or whatever per week for money. Now, if I was an associate dentist and not at the clinic, you know, not at working at a clinic, pulling teeth as an employee, you know, if I'm not there doing that, then what? I'm not getting paid, right? And if you have a wife and a couple of kids to feed and you're not working, then as an employee, it's not going to be a good thing for you. Finally, the, probably one of the most important takeaways for, from the employee quadrant is that this, whether you realize it or not, you're going to pay a very high amount of taxes. Something to consider. Uh, W-2 income is, if you don't already know, it's one of the highest tax incomes because you have no deductions. You have no way of legally sheltering your income. It's basically income comes in, take, take out a huge chunk of taxes, and then whatever's left over is for you. All right, so that's employee. So now let's move on to the self-employed category. Now, when I got out of training, I actually worked for another dental specialist for about two years, and I was getting paid a salary based on uh, the, the amount of work that I produced. So actually, I started off my career in this employee quadrant. Then after learning the business side of running a practice, I purchased this building that I'm in now and uh, actually took my practice and moved it here. So in essence, I went from an employee to the self-employed quadrant. Now, when I got to this stage in the game, I thought, you know, oh, this is going to be great. I'm the man. I don't have to answer to anybody, you know, except for my wife, of course, because She's actually technically an employee here. But anyway, let's keep that just being me and you, all right? So uh, after reading the cash flow quadrant, I quickly realized that even though I was, you know, working here in my own business, you know, I've got employees working for me. But guess what? If I'm not here doing the work, treating the patients, pulling teeth, placing implants, then there's no money that comes to these doors. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits first of, of being in the self-employed quadrant. And the first is, you know, what I just discussed with you. When I went from an employee to self-employed, I immediately felt that I had freedom. You know, going from here to here, freedom, ah, oh, at last. And I'll say some, you know, some freedom because Guess what? When when you're self-employed, you're still stuck in your job, which actually brings me to my next point. You know, even though I thought I had created a business, I actually, in essence, just created another job for myself. I didn't really technically create a business. It's like I went from an employee over another office to here creating a job for myself. I run it of course, but I'm still working in the day-to-day -day operations here or doesn't flow or doesn't work. Does that make sense? All right. So let's get into some of the uh, downsides. You know, you know, major thing is, you know, freedom, but let's talk about some of the downsides of being a um, in the self-employed quadrant. As I just mentioned, although someone is in the self-employed quadrant, they do have some freedom. Being their own boss, they're, they're, st they're technically still stuck in their job. You know, many of the times people in this quadrant, um, they are working longer hours than their employees. You know, many times it could be 10, 12 or more hours a day, six, sometimes seven days a week. And I know that 
I've actually been known to work on administrative tasks after hours, such as maybe paying the bills, doing payroll, you know, different things like that, which really it all adds up to the time commitment that people in this self-employed quadrant have, even though that those tasks aren't bringing in income, you know, when I'm sitting down and paying bills or doing payroll or doing whatever else that in itself isn't bringing any money, but it's actually costing me a lot more hours than if I was in the employee quadrant. Now, something else similar to the employee quadrant, <clears throat> just like they have a lot of the taxes, even though that you're in, you're self-employed, you run your own business, you also have a high amount of taxes uh, in this quadrant too. Um, self-employment tax, you're going to pay the, you know, usually when you're employee, you'll split the Medicare and Social Security taxes <clears throat> with your employer. If you're employ if you're the employer, guess what? There's nobody to split it with. So you're going to pay the full amount of Medicare taxes, Social Security taxes. Don't forget about all the different taxes to run this place, to run your business, to run your practice, you know, state capital gains, you know, the mu municipal taxes, I mean, all different types of taxes that you don't even think about, doesn't even register when you're an employee. And really, I had no idea when I started my practice that I would have so many different taxes to pay, plus the amount of insurance policies to purchase. You know, between workman's comp to liability and all these other different types of insurances, it's extremely costly and very time consuming to run a business. So now that we've talked about those two quadrants, do you start to kind of see a little theme trending between employee and self-employed quadrant? So all of these things that we're talking about are requiring what? Time. They're requiring your time. And not only that, it takes time to make money, right? So Kiyosaki calls this the left or the poor side of the quadrant. So these people, they aren't over here on the right side of the quadrant as either the big business owner or the investor, because when you're over here, you're required to be at your job, right? In order to make money, trading time for money. All right, so enough about the left side of the quadrant. Let's get over to where we were wanting to be, and that is the right side of the quadrant. So let me change my marker colors. So let's first talk about the, the big business owners. Now, since we've been talking about dentistry, so let's stick with that, okay? So we've got this dentist and he starts out and he owns his own practice and he continues to, to grow it and he's growing it. And now he moves into, you know, a smaller building to a larger building, which can actually house several other dentists. And he actually gets, eventually gets to the point where he grows the practice to run without him being there. So the practice will run without him being there. Pretty nice. So he is no longer in the day-to-day -day operations. He's out of that. He's not having to go and treat patients or he's not having to go manage employees. Why? He's been smart. He's hired other people to perform these tasks for him. He's, he's essentially done that himself and then he has backed himself slowly out of the business. And as each step, as he's backing out, you know, now he doesn't treat patients because he's hired somebody to do that. Then he steps back, he's hired somebody else to do, you know, manage employees. And then he stepped back and had somebody else to do whatever. And, and he keeps doing that till one day he can work, he can go two, three or more months, you know, at a time somewhere, he doesn't have to be in his business. Does that make sense? So, so daily tasks, when you're in the big business owner quadrant, the daily tasks are not on you. And, and another good thing about being in this category, it has to do with what we talked about over here, taxes. So you remember when we talked about all these taxes over here, being self-employed and all these taxes employee, well, as a big business owner, you can, you can essentially mitigate by them actually running a business. They can actually use the company's cash before they use their own. And what happens is this is greatly helps to decrease their tax burden. So again, let's continue with this dentist. So this dentist, um, he, he's a big business owner. He has income and he has expenses. So what he's doing is he's buying his supplies. He's buying his equipment, 
Maybe he's even buying his vehicle, you know, because it's a company car, right? That's all through the practice. So he's actually paying for all of these things before tax, using before tax dollars. And that's a major difference between the employee and the big business owner, right? Because the employee, remember, they only have the income coming in. They have no deductions. They have to pay their taxes on that income. Then they have to go out and buy their stuff. And, you know, it's totally different for the big business owner. Now, you know, again, this, this person that's over here, they can go in, they can have their accountant set up different types of tax shelters. You know, I'm not an accountant. So if, if you need one, you know, speak with yours or find one that can help you get to this point if this is what you want to do. And what they can do, for instance, they could set you up to where you're only paying your, yourself a salary and then dividends, you know, you'll, you'll pay taxes on the salary, but then you'll pay dividends, which actually dividends are taxed at a much lower rate than your salary. So hopefully by now you're starting to see the, the leverage of not working in the business. And you're also realizing the tax benefits by being over here, the big business owner. So the goal that I have for you is to move, if you're already on the left side of the quadrant, moving over here on the right side of the quadrant which actually brings us to the final quadrant, which is actually my favorite and the one that I'm actually aiming for. And that is the investor quadrant. Now, if you want to know the truth about how the rich really get rich, then pay attention because this is a secret. Why? Because they are certainly not trading their time for money. And this is what I want you to do as well. They're making their business, okay? So they're, they get a business, they grow a business, and the business makes some money, okay? Which in turn, they take that money and they turn around and they invest. And they continue to do this slowly but surely. So not only have they backed themselves out of their business by hiring people, but as they do these steps, as they take their money, they're taking it and they're moving it out, buying assets, taking it, moving it out, purchasing assets, which in turn is making them money, but they just keep, keep, it's just a cycle. And basically what's happening is they're moving from here where they have people working for them to here where they have their money working for them. So not only, so not only does the investor have people working for them, have their money working for them. And, and in this quadrant, this is where you're actually going to really start seeing exponential, exponential gains, not only in your net worth, but also your quality of life. Now, let me tell you a quick story about an experience that I recently had with somebody that he was actually in this quadrant that just completely blew me away. Now I'm in a mastermind group for other seven figure entrepreneurs. And we had a zoom call a couple of weeks ago with this person. Now I won't mention his name because you know, he, he'd like to remain anonymous, but what he now does for a living and how he spends his time each day, I never heard of anything like it before. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. I mean, it was like 115 people on this call. He had this huge spreadsheet. I mean, everything was by the book and we were just like blown away. So a little, ba little background about him. In the past, he used to be a real estate agent and what he did, you know, he, he worked, he was an employee quadrant. He worked for a realtor. He learned the trade. Then he went off and he started his, his own company, you know, whatever agency it was. And then he started hiring people to work for him. Okay. And then he moved over into this big business quadrant and he, he started again, backing himself out. So what happened was he grew this team working under him. So the more real estate that they sold, he also got a little bit of piece of that each time as well. But more importantly, during each year of his career, he made it a point again, to take the money and start investing you know, investing in real estate. He knew real estate, so he's going to invest in real estate. Now, at first he bought, I think he bought a few, a uh, few homes around his hometown. And I think it was in Maryland, a local college there that he actually turned around and he started renting them, uh, the homes to different sororities, maybe a fraternity too, but I think most of them were sororities, uh, on the campus there. Next, he bought some other single family homes. He eventually started apartments, I believe. And then now what he does, he focuses more on just passively investing. He's not so much actively investing. He's passively investing like I do in apartment syndications. And I think he has a little bit of self storage too. So he was on this call. Okay. Get this. So he, he, 
literally spent like an hour and 15 minutes on this Zoom call and he just, he had this spreadsheet of all of his investments on it. And all he does, he uses this to track his investments. At that time, a couple of weeks ago, which he may have more now, but he had 73 different streams of income. And get this, his job now involves managing these different streams of income to make sure they're continuing to bring him income because why? He's in this investor quadrant. So for instance, if one of his apartment syndications, let's say it's getting ready to sell, which I had to sell back this past summer. So let's say he's in the same process too. You know, maybe he got into one four or five years ago. It's getting ready to go full cycle. It's getting ready to sell. So then what he does is because his job as an investor is to manage his investments, he starts the process of searching for a new one to use, you know, when it sells to use those proceeds to, to automatically roll it over into another one. Thus, he just basically just keeping his in income streams going. Plus, remember, he's keeping his taxes by doing this as low as possible. Because again, he can take a depreciation, uh, offset the gain. So again, speak with your accountant about that. You know, this, this guy's extremely smart, but you know, he was explaining how he does that. So again, he started off his career in the E, the employee quadrant, moved to the self-employed quadrant, then to the big business owner. And now he's very happily residing in the investor quadrant. Again, he removed himself from the day-to-day -day business management of the different other real estate agents. And he has enough money now coming in well over seven figures a year in passive income, which is tax the lowest tax rate. And he's a full-time investor. Now, one last point that I want to make about this, uh, this quadrant uh, that Kiyosaki in the book, Cash Flow Quadrant states, again, this quadrant as well, they pay little to no tax because the majority of the income that's coming in here it's passive income. So that's going to be taxed at a lower tax rate versus getting taxed on your personal income that you make, you know, your earned income from your, from your day to day over here in the employee or self-employed quadrant. Now, I hope that you've realized after watching this video that again, it doesn't matter how much you make. It's about how you make money. That's one of the most important things that I wish somebody would have told me when I got out of dental school and my residency, because again, we're so focused on what our income is, you know, how, how much are we going to make? How much are we going to make over here working for this person? Or how much could I make if I move my practice to this area? So again, if you're on the left side of the quadrant, all right, you're trading your time for money and you're paying way too much in taxes. All right. If you're on the right, then you aren't trading your time for money and you're experiencing more freedom, you're paying less taxes, and you've gotten to the point that the wealth you've generated is just churning, is covering your expenses for you, which in turn, what? Frees up your time. Now, speaking of paying less taxes, what I'd like for you to do is head over to this next video over here, where I'm gonna discuss with you how to legally pay little to no taxes so you'll be on your way to building tax-free wealth. I'll see you over in this video.